Hey, welcome. Episode 59, if I'm not wrong. Right? Almost a uh, that's what the That's what the number said when I saw it on YouTube. I hope you counted right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't have enough fingers, <laughs> to be honest. Take and we're a couple of minutes late because, yeah, so David, it's only speaking about Phoenix Suns and basketball and NBA, so I couldn't stop him talking about that. Well, I so get out of all... here. <laughs> you know we're always two minutes late. But, uh, exactly. yes, that is correct. The uh, Phoenix Suns are in the NBA Finals. Now, we have a global audience usually, Mark, so I don't know if everyone is, uh, you know, keeping track of this. But, yeah, it's big news here in, here in Phoenix anyways. Well, I hope everyone is a basketball fan here. Yeah, uh, well... <laughs> I guess we'll we'll find out. So we'll keep you posted yeah, on that I don't one. Know. Let's say in the chat if you're following. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Barcelona went get into the final of the European uh, league. So that's, that's at least like Phoenix. Of a um, basketball league, yeah. the European basketball. I didn't know that. Hmm, I'll have to yeah. check that out. Come on, you have to, to watch the right uh, basketball league. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching the wrong league apparently. <laughs> All right, so let's. Uh, so, second thing that we were talking is that when you wake up, the first thing that you do at Belena, what, what is that? The first you thing go to I the do. Jobs page and check if there is something to show to your <laughs> friends, right? It's not usually the very first thing I do in the morning, it's usually about the second or third thing. Uh, okay. The first thing I do is check for any pings and check my email and then check for any job postings. But before you pull that up, Mark, let's just real quickly <laughs> give, a, give a quick recap of what we're going to be doing today, which is building the Bellina Dash project. It's one that um, is actually really, really easy to get started with because all you need is a Raspberry Pi and a screen of some type, a monitor. I'm going to use an HDMI one, but you can also use, um, you know, LCD panels or even those um, hats that go directly on to a Raspberry Pi. So we'll get into that in a moment. If you want to, I don't have a tab open for the jobs uh, listings. Do you? I will have visitors in a second. Uh oh, I'll get it then. You deal with the visitors. I'll get the jobs opened up. Let's see here because I think that there might have been actually a new posting this week as well. Let's find out. Yeah, let, let me share my screen if you, you want. You already have it? Here. Yeah, great. yeah, I already go ahead. It, but, uh, do it. No, if you sorry. can do it with visitors, then you go for it, because I wasn't prepared for it. So, yeah. Ah, perfect. It's we still there. have the yeah the, the the one posted one week ago the fleet oh, reliability. the fleet reliability we did talk about that one last week that's the one that I had in mind um, which I thought had been posted this week but you're right it was actually last week so we may have glanced at it um, fleet reliability is all about building tools building processes building applications to ensure the health and the ability to manage and maintain fleets. So customers, you know, they might have a hundred devices, they might have a thousand devices, they might have 10,000 or more devices. And we, as Bellina, are in the business of ensuring that that is a frictionless experience. So a fleet reliability engineer is someone who is always thinking about and devoted to making those customers lives easier and we still have the full stack engineers uh, yeah. and the technical sales leads uh, in yep, Europe, both Middle East yep. and Africa America uh, and same. SRE same thing mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, EMEA and America's SREs, of course, are responsible for, um, I don't know if it's, you can sort of use 
DevOps buzzword here as well, but SRE specifically is devoted to making sure that the Bellina infrastructure, back end architecture and systems are all up and running and healthy. Um, basically all the things that enable those fleet owners mm -hmm. to manage and maintain the fleets. Exactly. And um, yeah, design your own role as usual. The oh yeah. Best. Did you apply as a design your own role or not? Oh yeah, of course I did. <laughs> Doesn't everyone? I think you everybody to does. Story. Um, yeah, design your own role. There was not a posting at the time, and I guess it's. I'm looking at the calendar. It's been a while now, coming up on two years, but um, yeah, there was not a posting for advocacy and evangelism and so i filled out design your own role and hey lucky lucky enough yep to land the gig awesome. so good to to, uh, yeah, be here yep all right now let me stop sharing my screen and let's get into What's on your desk? Oh man, have I got a good one for you today. Uh, I think I might let you go first because mine is gonna, <laughs> I think mine is gonna cause some anxiety for you. <laughs> you better go first. <laughs> All right, and, and as well, if you're watching this, let us know in the chat yep. uh, what's on your desk, please. Uh, so let's go and, and call Chris. What's on your desk? I almost forgot about him. We we need to get him to record a new one. But all right, what do you have, Mark? What do you have? So you some got? episodes ago, actually, I show you these solar panel. Yeah, but so you yeah, I needed need to hook it up to something. Yeah, I needed to yeah to connect something on here. So I got this. Ah, a solar charge controller. So we were talking about this. Exactly. We were talking about I that. I don't know how to use one, so I'm excited to... So it's easy. You don't need to solder anything. You whoa, just connect whoa, whoa, here whoa, whoa. the solar panel. Okay. Here, you have the battery. And here, whatever you want, uh, your device. And this enables... So this recharges the battery and gives electricity at the same time. Um, um, I just got all oh, this. So you battery. need a battery. OK, so there's the battery. And so the charge controller is the one then that handles both charging of the battery mm -hmm. and discharging power out to the device. Okay, so that's the missing piece then in my yeah. puzzle you here. Know, that's exactly what I thought I might need after some quick Googling around. Um, because I tried to buy just some of these cheap <laughs> battery <Whoa>. packs. <laughs> it's like a re it's got a solar panel on it, you know, uh, and it just uh, it can't do both charging and discharging at the same time. And this okay. gives uh, 12 volts, 20 amps, and 240 watts. Yeah, so, no. Did that come from AliExpress, though? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it comes from Amazon. It, it had the okay. same price than AliExpress. I, um, yeah, as you know, it's faster. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Get into Amazon and probably right. can get one of these. And, and then uh, you will need a battery or something. Oh, uh, yeah, and those things are heavy. Um, I wonder, I don't want one that large, though. And plus, I have to wonder if that kind of a battery will survive in yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Phoenix, yeah. though. The heat, that thing will explode. I mean, that's basically going to be a ticking time bomb out in the desert. <laughs> I got to, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's in Spanish, but it's, I don't know why it says 25 degrees Celsius here. 25 degrees Celsius. That's nothing. That's not going <laughs> to. That's winter. What? <laughs> I can't I'm double that. I mean, yeah. we'll be pushing 50 in another few. Maybe weeks. you will not need ventilators for the yeah, no, yeah. for the for the CPU. You no, need, I can't. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, no, I can't get a battery rated to 25 Celsius. That's not going to work. <laughs> All right. Well, as we were thinking through what this week's episode was going to be devoted to, what it was going to be about, I started to think, okay, Belina Dash, I'll need a monitor. And I didn't want to sacrifice my main monitor in front of me. Now, last week, or maybe two ago, I showed off that little miniature HDMI monitor that I had gotten a hold of. Um, it's not a super high quality one. I think it was the cheapest thing I could find on uh, Amazon. But I remembered I had to go do some digging for this. Now let's do a little unboxing here. I had to exactly. go what is this? Well, you're going to find out now. Get this ribbon cable out of the way. And I have an LCD that I thought I could use for the project. And I want nice. you to make special note of all the plastic <laughs> <laughs> that is still on. I can't, where's That's the camera? That's too bad for the for <laughs> Look the at all that plastic on there. That's so bad for the climate. Yeah, look, I mean, they didn't even, look how they just attached it. <laughs> look how bad You have the, to remove it. You have to remove this, it. I think. This is it. This is yeah. exactly. I, I think I might have to peel this off. For the, for the first time? For the Live. first time. This will be the first time I ever, well, no, second time, because you made me remove that one from the inky <laughs> shot. But I don't know. I'm not sure I can live with this amount of plastic on here. This is crazy. Um, it turns out, though, that I could not actually make use of it. I've, it's been sitting in a box. So this is like a tablet uh, display? It's You're exactly right. It's like a tablet display. It's just the LCD portion mm -hmm. of a tablet. And what I found out when I went to go plug it in is that it's not the right kind of LCD because it has this 30-pin C no DSi adapter, which you would normally... Um, plug into a Pi. That's what the uh, mm -hmm. cable was for. It's just a little extension cable. You put this on here and then okay. plug this other end into the Pi like normal. However, the touch interface is controlled by this other ribbon cable and it's this tiny, tiny little uh, nice. connector here. So I couldn't quite make use of it because the Pi does not have a port for this. I've seen a few random single board computers out there that have these. I don't know how many pins this is, maybe eight or 10 pin, but um, it won't it won't work for this project, but mostly I just wanted to show it to you because of the sheer amount of plastic on top. <laughs> but how many pins the DSi has usually? Um, <laughs> If I remember, I can't quite see. Um, I think they might be 30. And this is um, less or more? This one, I think, is 40. Mm, um, it wasn't, now. yeah, I don't, I mean, I could just shove it in and pray. But uh, <laughs> either way, <laughs> with the touch, yeah, with the touch adapter not going to work anyways, I thought, Ah, forget it. I'll use the little HDMI monitor that um, that I had picked up a few weeks back. But this also brings up another talking point that we'll cover when we get into the project build. Um, because if you use an LCD, you might have some additional configuration that's needed. So we'll. This is actually a good. Uh, it serves a purpose just for, um, we'll cover that as we go through the build. So, um, David, you're watching your desk. It's getting into like, I don't know how to call it in English, but like an optimal price, uh, 
<laughs> trick or something like yeah. what's the price for that how much would you pay for this? yeah yeah how much would you pay for that i don't <laughs> if i paid more than five dollars for that i got ripped off <laughs> maybe we can do that uh yeah, yeah, challenge exactly. to the audience yeah like, hey, how, how much, much would, would you, you pay, pay for that yeah, yeah. I think I might have overpaid for that piece of junk, but yeah, I, I, um, probably already spotting yeah. on Amazon. Oh right? yeah, already. <laughs> and you know he's already <laughs> shopped for it, but I hope not. It's, it's not going to work. So uh, we have Jorge. Uh, he's a good friend who is yeah playing with a Valena Finn with solar the same solar panel and battery charger. Yeah, he actually Jorge is the one who inspired me to to buy this. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I might need you to. I'm gonna. Maybe have you take a set me a picture of that thing or a model number or something so that I can try to grab it here. Yeah, just um, solar charge controller. On yeah, Amazon. solar charge. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get one of those. I thought that's what we needed. I knew if it. If you want to suggest what you have, feel free yeah. on the chat. And yeah. the battery you have. But actually, he's based in Dallas, uh, so probably. Oh, well, I don't far. know if Dallas is hotter than Phoenix. Yeah, Dallas not. Is, is not as hot as Phoenix, but Dallas gets hot. Yes, I've been to Dallas. And not only so, is it hot, it's also humid. <laughs> so, um, so maybe if you want to suggest how to yeah, make yeah. a battery survive on harsh environments. Mm -hmm. And an that's... ultrasonic sensor. Jorge, if you don't mind dropping back in the chat, what are you, uh, what are you building? What are you hacking on over there? Yeah, I think um, that we, we will have to invite him in a, an IoT yeah. happy hour. Yeah, point. we'll get uh, a good friend. Yeah, Houston. Ah, Houston. Ooh, wow. ah, even even hotter, even worse. <laughs> uh, it's even more so humid there. Look what Jorge says. He he usually Express. So that's uh, he's AliExpress. Oh, he's shopping on AliExpress. Oh goodness, uh, can only imagine. <laughs> Take five weeks to get to Houston. Takes four to get here to Phoenix. Um, all right, so let's get into this build. Uh, it's been a while, Mark, since we've done a good hack build, you know, like um, literally walk through the process step, step by step. So yeah. I kind of wanted to just do some hacking. Um, yeah, absolutely. So let me switch over to Blurry Cam. Yeah, Ooh. Blurry Cam. Yeah, we were missing Blurry yeah, Cam. Yeah, he hasn't been around lately, but I've got him hooked up. He's extra blurry today, so that's good news. So I think, uh, so on episode 35, if I'm not wrong, uh, let me just 30. see if you can be. Yep, yep. 35, we, we got Screenly, which is a digital signage uh, project, right? Made uh, yes. on Balina. And, and Victor, if I'm not wrong, the founder of Screenly was showing us how to do a you know, digital signage system on Balina. So today, no, we're going to see something simpler, right? But, yeah. Uh, this is, for all intents and purposes, a similar type of a project. I will say that this one doesn't have all of the features and capabilities of something mm -hmm. like Screenly. Screenly is a more robust application. Um, but this is a good, quick way just to get up and running um, and sort of demonstrate how to do some basic digital signage. So here, I'm gonna bring in my screen share as well. This blog post that we have was originally from 2018, but it's been <laughs> updated. Well, it's been updated over the years. Yeah. We've continued. This is one of our you know, main supported projects. Let me grab the URL as well for you. And I'll put that in chat just so folks can click also. And this is a, oops, that's not the right link. That copy paste clearly did not work. Although, okay. we are, although we're going to be using that link a little bit later. I did, I did. Sorry. Oh, too late, no too late. Ah, well, now we've got twice as many. There you go. You can take your pick. Um, that's all right. No problem. So there it is. So this is a basic implementation. You know, Screenly absolutely is, uh, you know, is something that folks can use really when going out to production and has a lot of additional features and capabilities for managing um, your signage 
or kiosk applications at scale. But this is a nice little getting started project just to give a, um, give a, a, a you know, a, a pretty basic understanding of it. So the blog post, like all of our blog posts, are really thorough start to finish. And so this is what I thought I would run through today. Now, in the blog post, you can see that uh, we used an LCD. And as we saw just a few minutes ago, my LCD <laughs> is not gonna is not gonna fit the bill here. Um, yeah, probably this, this one. It's a Raspberry Pi. Right? Exactly. Uh, yes. Correct. Um, so um, the bill of materials is in here. I'm just gonna simply replace that with an HDMI monitor. You can see here you can use HDMI monitors as well. Um, and like most of our projects, we've also got a simple deploy with Bolina button to get you started. That's what we're going to use today. The other way to go about this would be to do a git clone and Bolina push to copy our repo, which is over here. And we're going to actually glance at a couple items in here in a moment. Um, and then do a Bolina push. But I'm gonna just click the blue button and fire off a build. When you do that, I'm already logged in. So easy enough. If you were not already logged in, it would prompt you to, or even create an account if you needed to. It pre-populates a name for the application, and it defaults to a Pi 4, which is what I've got right here, ready to go. So I'm, oops, yep, just a basic Pi 4. That's a two gig of RAM unit. Um, I don't, I didn't try it on a one gig, but I suspect it'll, well, it works on a Pi 3, so yeah, it must work on a one gig device as well. And I'm gonna hit create and deploy. And what it will start doing is all in the cloud, essentially grab a copy of that Git repo and start building it all on the Bolina Cloud build servers. And we should see a build start in just a moment, but in the, oh, and there it goes. But in the meantime, while that's building, I'm going to get the Pi powered up and ready. And to do that, I'm gonna hit add device, which is going to default back to a Pi 4 again, since we had already selected that. It's defaulting to the ESR, which is the extended service release. I think I'm gonna switch it to our regular Bolina yeah. OS. One day we will need to talk about Bolina OS, we'll the regular to, and the yeah. ESR. Yeah, that's a good point. We're going to have to cover that. The extended release is for long term, like an LTS kind of availability, um, where it's maintained for a longer period of time. I'm going to just choose the regular one for today. And I'm going to provide my temporary password because I know that Phil is watching and writing this down. So, and I'm going to hit download Bolina OS, which will start a download literally for the operating system that we're going to flash to the SD card. And let me switch. So I've got the SD card here as well. Are you on Safari or what are you using? I am in Safari, yes. It uh, opens up a new tab when I hit download. I'm not entirely sure why. I think that might be some user error, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, that's OK. So we've got the build still processing. And uh, see, I knew it. I knew Phil was going to try to write down those Wi-Fi credentials. That's why I had to set that up in advance. <laughs> I knew it. All right. Let's bring 
while that's going, did I share? Oops, did the. Let's stop that yeah, screen. Go to the right um, and sharing. Yeah. No, that's OK. I'm going to actually bring up Ah, you Max. stopped sharing. OK. You yeah, that's OK, because screen. now okay. it's time Ooh. to flash. OK, we saw that SD card image, Bolina OS, download. I've got my SD card. What it's do you going. have? I got a little Sandus Alt. Come on, Blurry Cam. Mm. I told you he was blurry today. It's yeah, a, we have to talk one day about SD cards. Mm. Yeah, we do. This is a Sandisk Ultra. Um, I don't know. There's the Extreme, the Ultra, and I want to say there's one more. A Pro, maybe? I can't remember. But um, so this is, I think, the middle grade one but um it'll it'll do for today so we need to flash what did we just download no, no okay now you're selecting the balena os image that you, yeah, you just download balena. from the yeah. application what was the name of it balena dash there it is how many images you have on your download uh, uh, for the... uh, nah, i cleaned <laughs> it up not to yeah uh, you yeah, it's not it. that many. I cleaned it recently. All right, but this is the right one. It's from this morning. Oh, it's not showing. That's weird. I had it. Yeah, I had it selected, but um, select the target mm -hmm. and flash. let's flash that thing. Yeah. You have to the password. Yeah. Um, on Mac. You have to type in the password for the uh, root user in order to flash um, an SD card. Yep. Okay. So we are flashing. Now, while that's flashing, the build is still progressing. Okay. Perfect. We're good there. So, so how, how are you going to connect this mini well, display HDMI? Exactly. So now we're going to... Well, let me change the... Yeah, let me go perfect. Right. OK, so, so I've got, got my Pi. And the Pi has the mini HDMI ports, mm -hmm. one and two here. Um, let me grab. We'll do this right now, actually. OK, SD card is done. It's going in. I have... Down. Oh, come on, Blurry Cam. Come on, really? There we go. Okay. So I have a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter. Mm -hmm. HDMI cable into the little miniature monitor. So HDMI is now good to go. USB-C power, let's make sure the power supply is plugged in, and power on. Now, we'll get the boot process. If this doesn't, well, yeah, okay, this might be a little tough to see. We actually, we don't really care about this as it boots right now. Once it finishes booting up, we should be able to see the splash screen and mm -hmm. as we continue through the project, we'll show you how to then render content onto the screen. Oh, if, that, cool. if that doesn't work too well, I have on standby, ready to go, the HDMI to laptop capture nice. card. I kind of want to, we'll see how this works out. I know we don't always get the best view. Um, if it doesn't work out, we can switch to the input to the laptop. Mm -hmm. But I but I like just the fact that we're showing it on a screen itself. So we'll see how this does. But we can um, we can always pipe it into the laptop if need be. Okay, now the flash was complete. Kill that. Release is done. The release must be done because I no longer see the spinning. Let's come back to 
our dashboard. Okay, the spinning is gone. So the release must have completed. Yep, succeeded. succeeded. Okay. It's good to check there. Yeah, sometimes it is. You never know. But um, the device is now uh, not entirely sure what it's doing. It looks like it rebooted. I bet you that was the first. Well, since that was the first boot, I have to wonder if it just expanded the SD card. I'm not entirely sure. But, oh, uh, no, online a few seconds. I don't okay. know why it like, blipped there. But, um, so okay. Images. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, oh, I see what it did. Okay. Interesting. Let's what make happened? this a little larger. Because Bellina Dash includes certain configurations out of the box, what it did was apply those configurations, and we were I was going to talk about these in a few minutes anyway, so now is as good a time as any. The reboot got triggered because it applied some new configurations. It applied GPU memory, 128 megs, and an overlay, V3D and I2C on, I2C on, SPI on, audio on, um, which we're going to come right over here. Let's take a quick glance at the download of the containers themselves. They're coming down nicely. Okay. While that's occurring, why do you need SPI um, I2C? Well, because if you use I'm switched over. This is the GitHub repo, and I'm going to mm -hmm. walk through a couple of bits and pieces in here as well. But if you use some of those small displays that oh, go okay. right on top of the Pi, oh. that um, the uh, they're usually about two and a half three and a half inches, maybe four inches, and they sit on top as a hat, then you need the SPI and the I2C. Um, yeah. So we Look just pre, yeah, we just pre-populate. Yes, exactly, just like that. Yep. But probably this is not for Raspberry Pi, probably this is for, for mm, Pierre. This is our Pi LCD, a Wave Share. Wave Share builds what some good products. I don't know exactly. Hmm. It is um, more, okay. Let me hold on. Let me get my. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let me make your. No, bring that back up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Put that on there. Let me see that. A 3.5 inch RPI LCD V3, a spot pair. I don't know. I think that might just be the brand name they gave it. But, um, and let me see the front of it real quick. Flip it over. Yeah. I bet you that would work. So, but that's the um, but that's the reason for those I two C variables okay. getting enabled. Now you don't actually need those if you're using HDMI like I'm going to, but that's okay. We pre-populate those. So, um, in device variables, you can see all of the stuff that we filled in automatically. So there's an activity timeout, enable the GPU, kiosk mode, launch URL. We're gonna make use of that one in just a moment, but that's how we're gonna tell the Pi what to put on here on this screen. Like literally, what is the content that we want to render? Um, and there's a few others in here. If you use Wi-Fi Connect to get onto a network, you can set those um, here and rotate the display if you need to, and you can window position, you can move the image around on the screen if need be. I'm also gonna come over to device configuration. Here we can see the stuff that got pre-populated on that first reboot. You can also manipulate the HDMI controls if you need to. Even though, so HDMI does a pretty good job of auto-negotiating. 
I tested this project yesterday and I had this Pi plugged into, like I said, my main monitor, which is in front of me, which I happen to be using at the moment. So I knew I wasn't gonna be able to use it again today. Everything was automatically detected. Just simply plug and play, wonderful, away we go. But this little miniature cheapo one is not quite as advanced and we're actually gonna make use of these variables to help position the screen exactly how we want it in just a few minutes. So those, that's why these are here. Um, and we're gonna use some of these video options to control, let me scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Here's how you can manually set your resolution yeah, and see. refresh rate, hold on, let me come down to this one, yeah, and screen aspect. So if you, hey, AB just checked in. Um, so if you have a monitor that is smart enough to figure all this out on its own, fantastic. You don't need this. But this little thing was not smart enough, so we're going to make use of that in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure, of course. It's better game, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So coming back to the blog post real quick, we show this off exactly what I'm talking about here and give some um, some samples here. So like for um, for that one that you showed, Mark, I have a strange mm. feeling you would have to do something like this, where okay. you would probably, well, actually, this well, is no, the, HD HDMI, well, this right? the HDMI, yeah, 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 never mind. Um, so you might be able to just get away with setting the device name. I, on the other hand, because I'm using HDMI, I had to get a little creative with the resolution, margin, mm -hmm. and refresh rate. Um, we'll show sure. that in a, in a moment. But let's do what we intended to do, which is put something onto this screen. And that is under device variables, launch URL. So let's give it a launch URL value. What do you want to show? I don't know. What do you think? We could actually do this YouTube. Oh, no, I'll get Echo. I was about to say I'll do this exact YouTube stream, but uh, I'm thinking Why not? better not. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, let's do it. That's a good idea. YouTube.com slash Marina. Um, Meanwhile, you copy and paste, and you can do two, two things oh, at the same time. Yeah, it's another browser. Hang on, I'm grabbing it right now. Um, AV is asking a question. He's there asking, is. do we need to know the resolution of the monitor for configuring properly the project? So that could be a yes or no. And the reason I say that is because, for example, as I mentioned a moment ago, the monitor that is in front of me automatically detected, and I did not have to know the resolution. I couldn't tell you the resolution of the monitor that is in front of me at the moment that I'm using for this um, stream. So in that case, if the HDMI or if the monitor supports that auto negotiation, yeah, no. Uh -oh. that I'm using for this. Whoa. Um, Whoa. Stream. So I didn't realize it even had case, speakers on it. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. No picture yet. No picture yet. So the audio is working. That's actually really interesting. Maybe and that's it's converting why. into a podcast. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> well. That's why we're going to go control and manipulate these values in just a moment. This is yeah, what I yeah. found out is that the resolution and refresh rate are not auto negotiated on this monitor. So, yes, we do need to know those values for this little thing. Um, so it kind of comes down to what the monitor 
is. Um, but yeah, my my nice big one in front of me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the monitor has a speaker too. Is correct. I didn't even know that. <laughs> um, so HDMI audio is working. That's good. All right. So we are getting pretty close to success here. Let's do a time check. What are we at? Nine forty-two. This might be the shortest episode yeah. ever. All right. Um, like it says, make a web frame with Raspberry Pi in thirty minutes. I think we might beat that. Um, so let's continue on in the blog post. It's, uh, you know, we go through the assembly of the case, displaying your own content. We just did that. We mm -hmm. set the launch yeah. URL and give it a try. All right. Well, we gave it a try, but we're not successful quite yet. So we're going to come back to, nope, it was configuration that we were looking at earlier and I'm going to need to set a couple of values in here to mm -hmm. manipulate this HDMI signal. When we do this, similar to how we saw the device reboot in the very beginning when it grabbed its initial configuration, the device is going to reboot again. Device yeah. variables can be set on the fly. We added the launch URL, and all it did was restart the container mm -hmm. with the new launch URL, which happened to be that YouTube URL. Easy enough. No need for a reboot. But over here in a device configuration, these are actually boot time variables. So it is going to trigger a reboot. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to turn on this hot plug signal. Um, that would allow me to disconnect and reconnect the HDMI if I needed to. And I did that yesterday just while I was doing some troubleshooting. So I'm going to leave it on for now. I don't know specifically if this monitor needs it, but I'm going to use it anyway. Now, the HDMI output group, this is where I need to come and refer to the Raspberry Pi documentation that I dropped this URL in way too early. <laughs> but here's the URL one more time for it. And I'm going to set the output group to two. Oops, which one was it? This one right here. Output group. Let's activate that, and I'm going to set it to two and save mm -hmm. that. That is probably going to be enough to trigger yep, a reboot. Okay, no problem. There it goes. Now, we still don't have the correct resolution. That's coming next. I'm going to use output number 14 which is 848 pixels by 480 at 60 hertz with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I actually tried a handful of these and a bunch of them did work, but just so we can see it a little better, I'm going to use number 14. Um, I got up to... Where was I? I think 28 was about as high as I got before things went sideways. <laughs> but we'll cut that. In, we'll cut that in half. And you try um, one by one, or no, no, no. There were a few I knew weren't gonna work. <laughs> there were a few I I knew just don't bother with. Um, so there is a little bit of trial and error there, or like I said earlier get a higher quality monitor and just plug it in and it works. <laughs> <laughs> but let's do 14. Yeah, 14. Mm -hmm. And that should trigger another reboot. Uh, might take a moment. Let's see here. Mm, nothing yet. No. Hold 
on a minute. Let's come back to summary and see if we've got it. Oh, yep, rebooting. It's there. Okay. Nice. So we'll give that another moment. Mm, that's, uh, so maybe we can talk about the services. Yeah, of, uh, exactly. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I think everyone knows Wi-Fi Connect, so we can. Uh, yeah. There is an episode about that. But what is FBCP? I'm going to actually, you know what? Hold on, I'm going to power cycle yeah. it. I don't even want to wait for that. <laughs> that was the... <laughs> I didn't even want to wait. Um, that was the impatient. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could have just waited, but uh, then we'll speed that along. Um, okay, so yes, while that's booting back up, we can see it flying by on there now. Um, FBCP is the... Um, oh, I forget what it stands for. Frame buffer... Console. We might need Phil for that one. I can't remember what it stands for, um, but that is the essentially the video output in and of yeah. itself um, block. And the block and the yes, the URL, yes. URL. The kiosk is the. Uh, oh, is it rebooting one last time? I think it might be. I think it's taking that last configuration change now. Um, the kiosk is the application itself. That is the, um, well, all the stuff really that we were just looking at in the um, services uh, and variables and whatnot. The kiosk is the application. The scheduler and Wi-Fi Connect are the ability to take a device and place it into, oh, you're better, Sorry. there you go. Yeah. Uh, take a device and place it into an environment that, you know, I have it set up right here with my Wi-Fi credentials. But what I can do, of course, is, oh, there goes the last reboot of that HDMI, uh, what did we set it to? 14. That's perfect. We're making good progress now. Um, a Wi-Fi Connect will allow you to take a device, place it into an environment. The Pi will broadcast an SSID. You use a phone or tablet or something to connect to it, and it will show you all of the available hotspots that are around you. And, uh oh, I hope we don't get volume again here. Let's see what happens. Nope, volume zero. Um, yes, I will maximize yeah. the, the block. And it'll and... allow you to connect mm -hmm. to whatever Wi Fi is in the vicinity of the device. So, and even the resolution, it's not perfect, right? No. It can be bigger, right? It can. So, I chose 14. I probably could have bumped it up a little bit. So that, let's come back over here. 14 was 848 pixels wide by 480. So this little monitor is probably, what is it? What is it at eight? It's probably a 10, it's probably a 1024 width by 768 i probably should have tried 16. yeah but that's a 4-3 resolution so i don't know let's um, try the 20 maybe no the, sorry the 16 no 60 we can do because it's give it a try 60 hertz the frequency of the Oops. refresh of the screen well what do you think let's give it a try <laughs> Nico says that. I know. <laughs> like an like old that. netbook. Yeah, it might be. I don't know. It probably yeah, is. I mean, it's have you probably. seen that that bad game? <laughs> Could have been. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> um, so the ultra slim uh, display that. Yeah. All right. 
And if that takes, we should. Fighting with this, yeah. I can't yeah. get it in front of my camera, but uh, it's well, not working yet. My display. That's so, okay. AB is asking, what's the link to the monitor? It's HDMI, uh, right? Yeah, it's HDMI. I found it on Amazon somewhere. Let me see. That's a copy. Uh, doesn't want to reboot quite yet. Sometimes the supervisor takes a moment, but pff, I'm not waiting for that. Oh, hold on a minute. Is it going now? Yep, there it goes. Okay. Um, so anyways, the point being, though, I mean, I'm looking at the clock and we're getting at the top of the hour is the project, I mean, if you are using a higher quality monitor, <laughs> um, you know, allows you to render dashboards or other content, no matter where you are. So I have the device on my desk, sure, but it could be anywhere. It's a Bellina device. It could be on your desk, Mark, and I can control it from here. I can update what is being rendered on the screen. I can um, push, of course, you know, any changes required to the device. In fact, let's change what it's even rendering. Oh, there you go. Look at that. That's a better fit. You were right. Good guess on that one, Mark. There it is. Now it's filling the display. So let's do this then. Let's come back to here and... Where's my, bring my screen share back in real quick. And let's change the URL because I actually happen to have a Bellina Sense device running on the network. And we'll give that a moment to then take effect. So because it's in the same network, what you are doing, it's pointing to the dashboard of, of this Valena Sense uh, mm -hmm. device, right? Yes, it is. Um, you will be able to visualize that. That's super awesome. Yeah. We'll take a moment for that. I'm going to plug in a mouse real quick. Because once we get, oops, hold on a minute. Turn on show cursor, and I think I it's coming back. Come on, yeah, now I've got a cursor. Nice. All right, so now I've got a little cursor on here. I plugged in a mouse, and the reason I did that is because here is Bellina Sense, but what I actually want to show is these, and they're not rendered by default. Oh, I'm a little bit off the screen. Hold on. Will I get... Oh, I don't know if I can scroll. No. You know what? That was still not quite the right resolution. Yeah. It's too big. It's a little it's bit off. off. Yeah. A little yeah. off. Um, hold on. If we roll up humidity, there's the temperature right there. So... Um, but yeah, is your you know. humidity outside or inside? Uh, this is inside. Yeah, this one is on a shelf, although admittedly it's in a window <laughs> taking direct sunlight at the moment. So <laughs> uh, it's probably not the most accurate. <laughs> but uh, oh, and Browser Block has an API which can change the URL without the container restarting. Well, that's even better. That's so, really nice. yeah. But so there you have it. You know, easy way to get going. Um, and a fun little project that really doesn't require too much. Just a Pi 4. Well, actually, it'll work on a Pi 3 as well. Um, and some sort of a display, whether it's one of those little hats like you showed, Mark, or an LCD panel like we have in the... But look at this one. This is super weird because it doesn't use all the pins. 
Is it is it only? Mm, it's only well. I mean, they might just have used that for a little bit of cost savings, or to allow you to connect something else to those yeah, pins no. if you needed them. You know, or you can use the official, you know, Pi LCD like we show in the blog as well. The yeah, this yeah, is the the one, uh, Yeah, threat. yeah. I don't know. They could have either used that smaller connector just because it's a bit cheaper at scale, or like I say, just to allow you to um, bring my camera back, just to yeah, allow you the, yeah, the to expose beam, those. Beam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can leverage those pins for something yeah. else. Yeah. So there we have it. Well, that was super cool. Well, there, to see how questions. easy it is to uh, yeah. set up the a kiosk. Mm -hmm. or, uh, not a kiosk, so, just a web frame. No, just a, just a web frame. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about, let's talk, you know, we've got just a few minutes left, but think about a use case, right? Let's say you have, um, I don't know, maybe you own a coffee shop or some other type of small store or a small restaurant. Um, and you know you have a couple couple locations. Say you've got 10, 15, 20 locations. I guess that's not tiny if you own 20 restaurants. But <laughs> you know if you've got your menu board, you can build your application, build your menu, and render it on all of those devices. And then you know if you need to change the price, just push it to all 20 locations. Or if you want to maybe test something, you know, you take something off the menu that's not selling and you add in a new item, you, you, you're not going to drive to 20 cities, 20 mm -hmm. store, 20, you know, uh, um, restaurants. Uh, you just push it to the fleet. Yeah, so it's it uh, pretty, pretty powerful, really. You know, I mean, sure, I got my little sensor here but uh or my little Bellina sense device but um you know you can you can make use of it in a lot of ways so that's about it you want to cover with our final one minute a recap of those postings we have and i'll put this link yeah, in one more you time can get use of of your sharing screen oh yeah 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 i'm already to grab that to URL. Do what you do every day, first time, the, the yeah. first thing that you do when you start working every morning. Yeah, let's this get the URL for it. Grab the URL, bring it right in. And just like we talked about at the start of the stream, Current openings include Fleet Reliability Engineer. This one, like we said in the beginning, is, um, this is a pretty neat one. It's all about building the tooling, building the products needed for customers to be able to manage those fleets effectively. When those customers have 100 devices, 1,000 devices, or 10,000 devices, we need to be providing, and that includes both internal for Bellina, tooling as well as the right uh you know the right product um for the Bellina cloud platform uh to enable those customers to deploy and manage fleets frictionlessly also like we talked about full stack engineer developer tools that is for internal Bellina tooling as well and technical sales lead sales engineer and SRE, both EMEA and the Americas. Um, sales lead sales engineer, that's our customer success team. We've talked about them in the past. They've been on in the past. <laughs> and um, SRE, of course, yeah. is all about keeping the systems and platform that runs Bellina Cloud healthy and online. And finally, design your own role. And finally. Yeah. See your position here. <laughs> Tell us the skill set you bring. Exactly. As David did, right? Yeah, there was no developer right. advocate. There was so, not a uh, no. Nope. He designed his his own position and probably yeah. mine. <laughs> so we have a, a, a comment like Yeah, what do we have? Yeah. Next what about Friday. next Friday? Are we gonna Can do a we... enough photo slideshow? Well, so that's one of the other use cases of the web frame. I think it's in a separate blog 
article, but we do also yeah. discuss um, the ability. Here you go. Is this the right link? Let's find out. Yep. Photo slideshow. I'll drop this yeah. one in for you there, Ash K. Yeah, please. And it's done. Don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah, the boy you certainly banana. can. It essentially uses this same project um, and set it to a photo album, uh, which could be it could even be just a static image, of course, if you really, really like one picture um, or you can sort of rotate them through. So, yeah, there you but go. Answering the question from Aksai, I don't know if I pronounced ah, your name. Yeah. Next Friday, we're not going to talk about, uh, yeah, uh, photo slideshows. OK, what is, what is what is We're going to talk about word? Laura again. We're going to talk that now on with Belena and a Raspberry Pi, you can build your own private, the things stack, uh, private uh, network server. So this yeah. is so something very unique, because it's something very new. And from now, with the LoRaWAN technology, you, now you can build your own private server, network server on a Pi on Belena in just one click. Yeah, I'm looking forward to learning about that one because I'm familiar. We've talked a couple of episodes worth of content, of course, on Laura. I'm familiar with the things network, the things industries, the things stack. I know, of course, that all goes through a publicly available um you know gateways routing and you can see packets and other other people's traffic and you know normally that's not that exactly big but of a let's imagine deal, that you're in the but, middle of the desert right. so you don't have internet coverage and you want to provide to your sensors it's, in the middle of the desert you know, exactly the possibility so, to go to a to a network server so now with a pi you can deploy with belina and course get then when all the services are up and right. running then go and run and the, have your, yep. yeah run the your entire own. stack yourself yeah so that's um so that opens up some interesting use cases i mean exactly like you said on that one there so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing that so yeah ab is asking ah, yeah well i'll mm -hmm. me some some messages sorry phil sorry yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so you can point your LoRa gateway to point. Yeah, that's correct. So we have. So what we are going to show is how to build your own uh, private uh, network server with the Things Stack uh, Open Source Edition, and we will introduce a new service that it's a basic station. So <laughs> yeah. in one Pi, if yes. you have a LoRa concentrator like this one, you will be able to have all the stack from the gateway to the um, to the network server all together. In yep. a buy, in a click. That's going to be crazy. I uh, I think I might need to get a concentrator by next week. Yeah. I don't know if I can get one here in seven days. Are they uh, yeah, out of sure. are they out of stock everywhere? Are they? I mean, is that like the chip shortage and and component shortage? Am I? Can I even buy one these yeah, days? Yeah, you should you should try to get one. Yeah, because yeah. You, will, you will have a lot of fun. The, the the thing is that the chip shortage plus the helium. Yeah, uh, we road. may have it's to like call making... in a. Yeah, we might have to call in a favor. Um, I know we have a new Balenista, Flynn, who got a, a Laura concentrator this uh, week. I might need to have him to on. To might have to have him on the show next week. Then, yeah. Um, all right. Well, we can figure it out. I think it's time I probably get a hold yeah. of one. Um, <laughs> but I'm a little worried and nervous if I can get a hold of one. So, all right. Well. Just a clarification of, sorry, uh, the Phil uh -oh. say Dash doesn't have the photo gallery anymore. As far uh oh, as did it get deprecated? I didn't even realize that. Um, might have to Is try. There any update? Well, yes. yeah, because we still have the blog. Yeah, rest an update here. Yeah, no, no, no. Scroll up. No, no, no. Go to the yeah, here. Oh. Here, yeah. rest updates. We've added um, the deploy with Belina feature to get you started and the button is here i guess i'll give this a test if it does yeah. not work then we may need to revise the blog post or pull the blog post down um i'll give it a check didn't Thank you, realize phil. that was a thing yeah thanks phil we'll have to give this a test all right well i think we are good then mark anything yeah. else 
I think it was a super great episode. Thanks uh, yeah, for using, to... yeah, bringing again blurry cam in the show. Yeah, blurry cam is back, back in action, extra blurry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was fun. It's been a while since we've done just a nice little, you know, hack, build a project, start to finish. So that was awesome. And see you all next week. Have a good weekend. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.